Yeah, it's from from an album of Christmas songs. Um, and really, the, the instigator of it is a lady called Carolyn Harris. She's the MP who's just been announced as being campaigner of backbench campaigner of the year by the Spectator magazine. She takes on projects like um, like child uh, funerals. Her, her son got killed in a tragic car accident when she was a barmaid. Years later, when she was an MP, she managed to get a law instated that that helped families pay for the, those things. Uh, and lately, she's been involved in the menopause campaign being run through through Parliament. You can't say no to her. Even Jacob Rees-Mogg was was. Uh, it, w there's a television. There's a video of him in the House of Commons saying, the, "The Honourable Lady, nobody can say no to her." And that's been the case all my life, really. We were in school together, in Sunday school together, and um, she she came up with this project maybe five years ago when she was packing hampers on a kitchen table for some local families and. The, and it's just grown and grown and grown. She's always said, can you do us a Christmas CD? Uh, and, you know, the thing is with Christmas charity records, I mean, one, the world doesn't need another one. Uh, and, and two, nobody buys records anymore. So how do you make it uh, raise money? So what we said is that we want to raise money and awareness of the charity so that people will donate to their Just Giving page. And the single, well, it's, yeah, it's Steve Baltimore probably came to national attention when he played the, the, the title role in Jesus Christ Superstar. He's a fantastic singer. And so I started roping in my friends as well. So we did a version of uh, A Little Town of Bethlehem. And then the monster, <laughs> then the monster Esther got bigger than both of us with the video. Tower. So the video is lovely. We, we've got uh, the Salvation Army brass yes. band playing on it, a children and youth we've choir. We've got it all, sleigh bells, it's got, it's got everything you should tick on a Christmas You've thrown record. it all yeah, at yeah, it, yeah, haven't you? Yeah. And there's you packing up a box as well. They actually got you working, Mal, did they? Yeah, it's, it's, it, was, it was filmed at a place called Merton Farm Shop. We were packing up hampers. But my uh, my very close friend, he's a, he's a set designer, film set designer. So he designed the original Doctor Who series, and he's done Resident Evil, and he's just been working all summer on a film with um, Steven Spielberg, uh, a, a Dracula film. He was back, so he, we, I managed to rope him in to make it look the part. And, and actually, as we started to film, he said, he said, why don't we go thriller on this at the beginning? I'm going, what do you mean? We're we all going to start dancing. He said, no, no, why don't we do a little bit of acting at the beginning? So there's a little scene with myself and Caroline Harris as we pack up the, the final hamper. And then we thought, well, I wonder who else? Wouldn't it be great if we got Michael Sheen maybe to do a monologue over the beginning as, as the scene is unfolding? And he's currently doing Good Omens in Scotland. And I mean, all the way through the last two weeks, I've just had pings on my phone with WhatsApp messages with like Catherine Zeta Jones, like Bonnie Tyler, like Max Boyce, like uh, like a Michael Sheen, sending in their contributions to the video, and it's uh, it's made me smile and actually brought a little tea to my eyes because Michael Sheen is brilliant at the opening of uh, A Little Town of Bethlehem. It's great. Now, we're not going to give any spoilers. We are going to play the track in a minute, but we're not going to give any spoilers for the video because people need to go and watch it, don't they? And then go and click on the links after it. How, how can we see it? How can we see the video, which is released today? It's released today, yeah, officially at nine o'clock. But do you know what? Because I knew we were doing this, I've set it live already, Esther. So just for the premier <gasps> listeners, premier, inspirational peak. breakfast. So if you go to www.malpope.com, www.malpope.com and it should be the first thing you see when you click on so click on the video and the idea is if you like it and if you'd like to use it in your church because we've done about six videos from the album including oh come Holy faithful bleak midwinter uh, if you'd like to use them then please do free of charge but if you like them uh, maybe consider giving to the just giving site and and hopefully this this is happening in wales it's being rolled out across the country in various uh, organizations are taking on maybe you could do the same thing in your church or your community you know because you know poverty is hidden as well people don't people are, are, are proud and they don't want to look as if they can't afford it and you know maybe maybe there are people there that could help in your own community from something like this because everyone deserves a christmas it's just bringing around a, a little bag of something isn't it a bag of mm. treats just uh, reaching out in that way and as we know we've, we've heard lots of people talk about these kind of projects on the on the show and, and food banks as well mm -hmm. and of course that gift is, is uh, something lovely in itself but it's also the relationship that it starts isn't it when you go around and bring a gift for someone big smile on your face that the whole a whole new thing can can be launched yeah. as, as, as a result of that I heard something this week. Um, if you're going to find out who the Christians are in your area, who would you ask? Would you ask the vicar? Would you ask? You'd ask the poor and the needy because they're the ones who'd be able to point out who the Christians in your area. And I, and maybe yeah. that's maybe that's a good starting point. That's a good challenge, isn't it? Oh my goodness! Let's talk about Christmas music, though. You've done this beautiful version of a little town of Bethlehem. My daughter has been nagging me to put on Christmas music <laughs> since about well, since we came back from summer holidays, basically. So we let her put it on the playlist recently. What What are your favourites? What What is What is What is your must? What's your first uh, Christmas song that you play once the season comes around? 
uh, in the bleak midwinter. It's my, it was my dad who's no longer with us. I always say uh, when I've done, when I've been presenting radio programs or doing concerts, I say this is in the bleak midwinter. My 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 dad's favourite carol. And actually, there's uh, when I was preparing this, I've just had two new grandchildren, so I'm knee deep in kids at the moment. And I noticed when my elder daughter, had her little boy, and he, he he was born a bit early and he was a bit jaundiced and everything, just the way that she nursed him and and she. She kissed him while she was nursing him one day while I was at the house. And you know, it's that line, he, he, the, 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 in his mother only, in a maiden bliss, worshipped the beloved with a kiss. And it really mm. struck me as a little picture of heaven as my daughter was looking out, nursing her new child. Oh, that's such a beautiful moment to, to have just witnessed, to have captured like that. Let's talk about the worst Christmas Oh, was Christmas. Music. <laughs> uh, Agadoo, was it? Was that a Christmas? Was I don't think Christmas? it was, but it is. <laughs> <laughs> Black Lace must have done one. Uh, they must have done one Christmas record. I mean, the, the thing is, you know, in the context, as long as you've got a playlist with, you know, the new oh, a Little Town of Bethlehem, together with whatever Black Lace did, and Frank Sinatra, and Wizard, and, you know, all the others as well, uh, and, the, you know, the, King's College, Cambridge. It, it is a mixture. The music is so much a part of remembering what our Christmases were about. You know, when I was a kid, uh, we you know we we wait to see what was the Christmas number one. Was it Slave? Yes. Was it, you know, was it Mud? Yes. Was it all of that yes. type of thing? And maybe it's lost that jingle bell sort of sound now for Christmas number one. Well, well, you never know if if a little town of Bethlehem gets there. There's certainly plenty of sleigh bells on that. Um, <laughs> so it, it it is the sound of Christmas. It's the smell of Christmas as well as all the other things. And actually, you know, what else? And somebody else said something else. last year. All we wanted for Christmas was to hug some was to be with our families and let's not forget that this year when maybe it's a little bit easier to, to shop <laughs> yeah that's true and uh, you've written some original christmas songs as well as doing beautiful versions of, of classic carols how, how do you go about uh writing a new christmas song when as you say it's not like we need any more but it's quite no. nice to have some new ones well you've got a couple from yeah, the, on the album a couple, of, a couple on there um do you know what the thing is you always write them at the wrong time of year for a record release because you always write them at christmas don't you because when you're in the christmas spirit you know when you, they always say about wizard it was recorded in june and the kids you know had to a tinsel in the studio so it's it's some of them are, are slightly older the, there's a song called christmas in my heart and actually says i fear for christmas when november comes when the shops play carols and sell children's guns you know it's sort of i, I wrote it at, at that time of year it was, it was probably just november into december so uh you know that, that the wonderful thing about Christmas songs is, if, if they if they survive, it, it, they haven't got a time limit on them. They've got a month. Uh, it's like sell by date, but every year, well, ask Noddy Holder. I think Noddy Holder's, you know, probably spent his whole life just spending the royalties to Merry Christmas, everybody. So they come back every year, and hopefully they become part of everybody else's Christmas as well. You know, uh, hopefully, yesterday your children will be listening to a little town of Bethlehem thinking, oh, Mum, can we put that Malpope record on? Because it makes us feel like <laughs> Christmas this year when they're in their 30s. <laughs> I'll give it a try. And of course, we're, we're not at Christmas yet. We're only nope. just at the beginning of Advent. The countdown, uh, mm. the countdown is happening. Happening. What does Advent mean for you, uh, Mal? Alongside the, the to-do list yes. and the promotional stuff for your album, what does Advent really mean for you? It's start again, isn't it? It's a it's a start again because you know the darkness is overwhelming at the moment. You know, it gets dark half past three, four o'clock, but there's there's a lot of darkness out there, and we you know we're going through the new the new strain of the pandemic, and and people are very struggling to to get by. But there's a light coming. There's a light coming. There's a candle going on. And every Sunday, there's another candle going on. It's going to get brighter and brighter. And in three or four weeks' time, the light will shine again. And hopefully, you lead us on to, you know, to the spring because the sun will rise in the morning and, God willing, Easter will come. So it's, this, it's the start of the calendar again, isn't it? And I get excited. I mean, I'm, to be honest, I'm more excited these couple of weeks as it all starts to tingle than maybe in the mayhem of the week up to Christmas when you're panicking about, you know, what you're going to buy, Auntie Joan or whatever. You know, so it's, it's, a, it's a lovely time of year and the kids are singing carols and everybody's sort of getting a little bit excited and think it's too early, but it's not really. It's not really yet. All about the anticipation. Mal Pope, lovely to have you as a guest uh, on the show this morning. We're going to play your version of uh, O Little Town of Bethlehem right now. And tell us again, where can we uh, hear it more and where can we give to the Everyone Deserves a Christmas campaign? So it's all over the streaming sites and uh, Spotify and Apple and all that. All the links to that and the new video, which is going to be, well, it's launched now for Inspirational Breakfast. It's launched now. www.malpope, all one word, M-A-L, Pope. Dot com,
above thy deep and dreamless sleep the silent stars go by yeah dear. 